Okay, so let's come in, come back to our slide screen here. They looked very, very different. So suppose we are sort of uh, not using Excel and just coming back to our discussion. Uh, naively, we want to try to solve the original integer model. And our idea might be to use what we are familiar with and then tweak the outcome, right? So what we are familiar with is non-integer uh, outcome, that is the original version without touching on integer and binary constraints. Let's call it LP relaxation. So one naive idea is to, hey, why don't we ignore yeah, the, the constraints, integer binary constraints temporarily? Let's solve the LP relaxation model first. And we have seen that the answers are 2.5, 1.5. And then we tweak the answers. We reinterpret the answers so as to ar arrive at a final value, which are integer. So here will be the idea right? that we try to round. If we apply rounding, x1 should be 3, x2 will be 2. And we know it's not right yeah, because we know that the actual answer should be 3 and 0. So um, what's going on? If we plot it on a diagram like this, and this cancellation is intentional to show that we are, uh, we are trying to solve the original model by temporarily ignoring the integer constraint, then we see that the LP relaxation brings us to optimal solution at this point where the colored cyan region is uh, showing us the set of all possible candidates that is the set of all feasible solutions the feasible region where within the set of feasible can uh, solutions this point is the best point in terms of giving us three times 2.5 plus 2 times 1 by 5 being the highest value, which is right because we're trying to maximize uh, this expression, 3x1 plus 2x2. So this point is optimal. And if we round, because they are 0.5, so we round to 3, 2. Can we see what's going on here? Is there a problem? Is there a problem? Now recall that points on and inside the cyan region, they are feasible, meaning they respect all the uh, stated constraints and the non-negativity constraints, right? So they are feasible. So if you have a point that is outside the feasible region, then it is not feasible. If it's not feasible, means that in real life, we cannot do it. We cannot do it. We, it is not implementable. We cannot have, for example, negative workers, we cannot have um, negative raw materials, you know, things like that. And we do not have 5,000 hours of uh, uh, operating hours when we only have the license to operate at 500 hours, things like that, right? So it becomes nonsensical in real life when the optimal solution is infeasible. So notice something interesting here. We have visualized the possibilities of this model. The LP relaxation model, right? So by looking at the sign region, we know what can be done, what cannot be done. So now when we have rounded the, the LP relaxation solution, we find that it's infeasible. And in general, that may not, that usually is the case. But we might give ourselves some further explanations and say, oh, you know what? Um, we should round all possibilities. So we should round up, round down. And even though that might generate four solutions, we can al always try them, right? We can always try individually, substituting them into uh, 3x1 plus 2x2. We have four objective function values, and then we pick the highest. Now, that is still very, uh, uh, very efficient. Very efficient, because we have one point that kind of generates to four in this case, and we just test the four rather than test infinitely many possible integer combinations. Well, that might work, but we realize that we get one solution here uh, because there's only one feasible solution, so it has to be that solution. But it is, 
it, it doesn't sound, seem like it doesn't look like it is optimal is it optimal the solution presented will be two comma one right two comma one but we know that the actual optimal solution exists and it is actually three comma zero here see that yeah so it defies gravity it is throwing us way off and it is telling us you know it is a treacherous journey if you try to use lp relaxation and try to fudge the answers by rounding by having some weird explanations that basically are not supported by mathematics so that's the challenge yeah so in the end what happens we have no choice we basically have to uh, be forced to explore all possible solutions of course there are some uh, tricks and enhancements and uh, accelerating methods in mathematics to help us uh, build bounds so we know that for example optimal solution cannot exist below this point so let's search the upper space or something like that to accelerate what is essentially still a point by point search uh, algorithm right so that is the difficulty of having integer constraints like that so in the end we will have to basically identify all the feasible uh, candidates this time round it will be just very very pointy set of points um, yeah i think that's it because one comma two seems to be outside yeah so uh, we have to explore in this case it might seem trivial just run seven times uh, the objective function of these integer combinations but remember that most practical uh, problems may end up having 20 variables 2000 variables and the combinatorial possibilities would just be very very intimidating yeah? so uh, that's the challenge so uh, thanks to our excel trial solution we know that uh, the right answer is actually three comma zero right so um, a neat way to present that is to show the various uh, potential candidate uh, or feasible points they are feasible because they're inside the cyan region and they are also integer uh, in nature so we just substitute them into objective function and calculate and see who has the highest score because we are maximizing if we are minimizing then we go for the lower score right so this will be the what we call the brute force solution uh, forced to explore point by point pick up the stone see whether it's bigger pick up another stone see whether it's bigger and so on so that will be the the brutality right the difficulty of trying to solve it now fortunately as we have seen we actually don't need to worry so much about uh, the solutioning part of it at least in this course now of course if you take another course to try to really work it out by mathematics that's another uh, discussion but for now let's just focus on how to configure excel to help us solve integer and binary problems and we have found that that's really very simple very straightforward and therefore our discussion and, and focus should be on the modeling part remember the two stages we have a business problem that is nebulous that is a bit vague we need to model it by describing this nebulous state with a clean and well-defined uh, linear programming model so we need to focus on this because the second stage of solving this model whether it's easy or difficult has been well taken care of let's say that right by excel and software technology so let's focus on that our next uh, two sessions will be focused on uh, trying to come up with uh, some practice and also skills to appreciate the problem and converting them into uh, linear programming models